Hey everyone, I'm Emma. I make videos about lifestyle, veganism and a bunch of other topics that interest me and today we are going to be talking about a video put out by the animal rights group SAFE showing footage from a free range chicken farm near Auckland and discussing some of the response that the poultry industry has given to this video. I'm not going to play the footage here but I have a link to it below because if you are aware of the conditions on chicken farms and what that can be like, even on free range chicken farms specifically as a lot of vegans are, then it won't be anything really new to you so I didn't see the point but you can look at it through the link below. But the reason why SAFE released it was to show the many New Zealanders who buy free range chicken and they do so with a certain image in their head, you know, they choose to pay extra money for that product as opposed to other chicken products that are available because they think they're making a more ethical choice. And they have this image of how those chickens are living that is very far from the truth. Now, the Minister for Primary Industries and the head of the Poultry Industry Association, they are saying that this footage seems to be historical. But SAFE is saying that the footage was filmed between November and February. So both of those things, I don't see how those can both be true. Um, but, you know, given that meat chickens do only live for around six weeks, perhaps the poultry industry is using the chicken's artificially short lifespan as the yardstick by which to determine whether something is historical. And therefore, you know, they are all agreeing that the footage was taken between November and February. Uh, I don't know though and I don't think it really particularly matters exactly when the footage was taken because I don't believe that there have been any you know large changes to how our poultry industry operates um, within the last you know year or so so unless they're going to say that the footage is like five or ten years old I'm not sure what kind of significant difference they would make. So when they think of free range chicken as opposed to non free range chicken many Kiwis would probably imagine a bunch of chickens out in a field or sometimes in a field and sometimes in a barn just wandering about in this happy little group and living this pretty natural type of life for a chicken until you know one day they're killed but in New Zealand free range doesn't really mean that it just means that the chickens aren't in this tiny little cage you know a battery cage sort of thing but you can still have way, way too many chickens packed into one barn for its size. And free range essentially just means that technically the chickens can freely range around the barn and that there is an outdoor area that they can technically access. But it's all just really a technicality that leaves these birds still having a very terrible quality of life. And it's estimated that only around 30% of the birds in these farms will ever actually get to that outside area because the sheds are just so crowded. Not everyone is going to make it through the crowd to get near to that hole or one of the holes and actually get outside. And because it's so crowded, because these birds are forced to spend their lives in close proximity to just vastly, vastly more birds than they would naturally group with, that is hugely, hugely stressful to them. I mean, imagine if you had to live your life in a room with tens of thousands of people in it. It wouldn't just be an inconvenience, it would absolutely do your head in. It would cause you just enormous stress because our brains aren't able to cope well with something like that and neither are chickens. The footage and safe statements on it, it focuses a lot on the fact that many welfare issues are created because this is a breed of birds we are using who were selectively bred to grow to their full size in less than six weeks. So you're going to have many that die of heart failure, uh, many that become lame, that topple over because they're not able to carry that weight around and they can't get up. And the Ministry of Primary Industries said that if they had seen this footage before it was released and determined that it warranted investigation because something was happening within it that, you know, wasn't within our laws, um, then they would begin that investigation. But SAFE made the great point that if there was something in their footage that they were taking that would have caused MPI to investigate, then they would have contacted them sooner so that they would start that investigation. But they knew that this is just how the industry is and that nothing that was going on in their footage was anything that is in breach of the government's code of welfare for chickens bred for meat. So there wouldn't have been any point in contacting them. 
Although a poultry industry association executive director said that the footage showed unacceptable conditions that aren't standard, which seemed very curious to me because I don't see how it is not, and I would love them to explain that to me, because are there not allowed to be that many chickens in one shed? Are there meant to be more doors to the outside provided? Are they not actually bred to reach full size within six weeks? Does breeding them to do so not cause all the health and welfare issues that have been identified on many, many farms around the entire world? He then said that the New Zealand poultry industry was internationally recognised as having a low mortality rate of 2%, which that was also a kind of curious comment to me because let's for argument's sake just assume that that's totally true. You would still actually have a 100% mortality rate, 2% that die early because of illness or accident, and that's 2% too many in my opinion, but the poultry industry thinks that that 2% is a good figure, and it's not because from their perspective they're thinking, you know, that's not great, but hey, unfortunate things happen, and we've still got this other 98% that we're giving these full and amazing lives. They're thinking it's a good figure because it represents a number that they can afford to lose while still turning a good profit off of the 98% that still die early because they're killed for meat that people don't need to eat. If it's 2% that are dying in the ways shown in the video, then those 2% to me, they shouldn't be just a number or a wastage or a business expense. Each one is an individual that doesn't deserve or need to be in that situation. And Neither do the other 98% really, because just because they're not dying in the way those 2% are dying, um, they are dying, and they are also all individuals that don't deserve or need to be in that situation. And as has been discussed already, it's not even like this is a scenario where you've got this one bad day after this really fabulous and happy life where living conditions are terrible. It's not, you know, this enjoyable life for them and then you know, one day they're killed. Another thing that Safe mentioned is that some companies overseas are starting to move away from these fast growing breeds due to welfare concerns that the public have and they're going back to slower growing breeds and you know I obviously still wouldn't be okay with that because I think they're still dying for an unnecessary reason and we still don't know what kind of living conditions they're going to be kept in probably they're still going to be in these big block sizes but um, you know I don't expect everyone to just instantly have the same mindset as me I used to think that it was okay to kill animals for food so long as they had had a good life and even if you are in that camp that I was in but you're eating chicken in New Zealand then you're not living in alignment with your own morals because they are having a bad life. So if you feel that way, stop eating chicken and tell the poultry companies what changes, if any, they could make to get you to start buying it again. Do you want slower growing breeds, less chickens in a flock? What changes would make you feel okay about buying it? I'm going to stick with my fake vegan chicken products because some of them are so, so good, the ones I've tried. It's not that difficult to fake the taste and texture of chicken meat. Um, so I'm just going to stick with that for myself. But let me know where you're at on this issue and I will see you in the next video. Do your best to be kind today. Bye.